While we know the games Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Pokemon Let's Go Eevee are very controversial within the Pokemon fanbase, one thing I don't believe people should be overlooking is the music. I'm quite cynical when it comes to Pokemon, though it's only out of love for the franchise, please keep that in mind. But by far my favourite and most anticipated part of new game releases is definitely the music. So when I heard that we were getting yet another Kanto remake, my mind instantly teleported into the world of music and how great it could sound now that Pokemon had made the leap to the Nintendo Switch. And guess what? I, Twip, this guy, not only loves the soundtrack of Let's Go, but it's also one of my favourites in the entire franchise. If you're a complete Pokemon music nut like me, then sit back and relax as I gush about what makes the music of Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee so fantastic. While I absolutely adore what the music of the Pokemon franchise has to offer, lately I've been having an issue with the synthesizers used and how they portray the core audio quality of these music tracks. So I've been enjoying the music from games like Auras or Sun and Moon despite of that, and on a purely compositional level. Let's go however, I believe they make the best use of what I think think are synthesizers in the entire franchise. Each instrument heard sounds crystal clear and authentic to what the real instruments sound like. So every time I listen to the soundtrack, it gives me a real sense of space and atmosphere, as if I'm actually there listening to the composers creating the music in real time. Instrument quality really does add more depth and meaning to these pieces, turning what I thought were pretty okay sounding music tracks into some of my favourites in the franchise. Sadly, this hasn't been carried over to Sword and Shield, which are seemingly using the same synths as Sun and Moon, but I'm still grateful that they decided to use more authentic sounding synths with Let's Go. My hope is that if we ever get any future games in the Let's Go line, that they'll stick to this instrumental quality. I can only dream of Johto music remixed in this style. It'd be amazing. While I've previously stated that some of the compositions I found okay before to now hold up really well on their own, Kanto to me has always had some fantastic compositional pieces that have really stuck with me over the years. To use an example of this, the trainer battle theme from Let's Go got a fantastic makeover and has since became my favourite trainer battle theme in the franchise. The slow paced intro kicks into an intense melody with overpowering trumpets, climactic violins and some fantastic drum work. It's one of the best examples of the intensity of Pokemon battles. And I think this scene portrays this the best. X and Y's is just a tiny bit behind. The gym leader theme follows the same formula, making great use of the violin and subtle use of the electric guitar to provide us with the best version of this theme by far in my opinion. And as with the trainer battle theme, it's also my favourite gym leader theme in the franchise. I love how this game even took the music of Pokemon Go that I definitely found average before and turned them into something truly great, with the violins combined with the piano making the Pokemon Go battle theme sound more pleasant to listen to than ever before. And lastly in the battle theme department, we've got a fantastic variant of the champion theme, with excellent use of the drums to provide a different, more intense version of this iconic theme, making it my second favourite of this theme just right behind the Pokemon Origins version, which is intensity to the absolute max. Outside of the battle themes, there's just something about the root and town music that sounds so pure and special. 
The music seems to be going for a more innocent feel, sounding very authentic to Pokemon Red and Blue, but with enhanced instruments to give them a new lease of life. Celadon City prioritises the violin to carry the music, with constant piano notes and a background acoustic guitar to give the music a really homely and down-to-earth feel. The inclusion of the xylophone on the second act of the music helps give the music a sense of childlike wonder, which is what these games were all about, or at least to me. The same could be said for most of the music in the game, but Celadon City definitely stood out as one of the best examples for me. Then there's music like Cinnabar Island, which aims to make the music feel more grand and epic than before, with a strong presence of trumpets, followed by melodies by the violin, giving the feel of being in a large city. Route 1 is a good example of capturing that sense of childlike wonder I talked about previously, with the flute being used to great measures during the first act, while the second act goes for a crescendo by adding a backing violin to add more compositional depth than what was previously possible on the Game Boy, which is by far the biggest advantage of remastering music of older games. <laughs> I wish I could talk more about this music, but I could genuinely be here all day gushing about how good it is, and a lot of the music follows the same compositional design quirks that I'd be repeating my points by covering too many pieces. But my main point is that you shouldn't sleep on this soundtrack, and in fact, I implore you all to listen to it in your own time and appreciate how well composed it is, especially that extra layer of complexity that came from this music. There's a reason I went out and bought the soundtrack physically from Japan. It is awesome. And that is the music of Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee.